Hi, my name is Meredith Evans and this is my capstone project. The traditional purpose of education is to teach students a set of predetermined state standards which the teacher divides up into manageable units throughout a school year. Traditional education focuses on students remembering information for a short period of time, usually until the next assessment, and not making any connections to prior knowledge or allowing them to expand their knowledge. In common traditional teaching practices educators use are lecturing by the teacher, quiet note taking by the students, and a guided cookie cutter project, and concluding in a unit assessment. In traditional classrooms, the setup of the room is just as teacher focused or centered as a setup of the lessons. Classrooms normally have student desks in rows facing the front of the room or facing the main teaching spot. There is no focus on the students as individuals or the class as a community. The focus is on the state-driven curriculum and the teacher. The teacher's role in a traditional setting is that of a content expert and in-house lecturer. Teachers follow national and state standards to set the course and material teachers must teach in a school year. T many teachers do not include meaningful or active activities during the school year since it would delay them getting in the mandated curriculum. According to Peter Eastwell in 2002, the traditional teacher-centered view was that students, viewed as empty vessels, waiting to be filled with new knowledge, received understanding by absorbing information supplied by teachers and found in written materials. This is a call for all teachers not to be satisfied with being okay to referring to students as blank slates or empty vessels. Students arrive in our classrooms with a great wealth of knowledge and ideas which we need to tap into to take curriculum to the next level. Not satisfied with coloring inside the lines when it comes to students' education. Chapter 2. Social Cognitive Constructivism is an educational theory and practice which learners can construct their own knowledge in an active, social, and student-centered classroom that fosters an environment students are free to individually internalize the content, build on, and connect to prior knowledge. Rather than simply receiving knowledge as transmitted to them by an educator or a textbook, it creates a student centered and student directed classroom which are facilitated and guided by the teacher. Social cognitive constructivism is the result of educational theorist work of Piaget, Vygotsky, and Bruner. Piaget's influence on social cognitive constructivism is evident in that constructivism focuses on allowing students to process new knowledge individually after an activity or lesson. Vygotsky's influence on constructivism is in the active and social learning approach. Vygotsky believes students learn more from interactive and cooperative learning. Finally, Bruner's influence on constructivism is felt through discovery learning and problem-based learning since he theorized that students are naturally curious. Piaget, Vygotsky, and Bruner created the theoretical foundation of social cognitive constructivism. The practices and beliefs of each help mold constructivism into what it is today. Instructional strategies educators use frequently in constructivist classrooms are cooperative learning, i.e. jigsaws and task rotations, active participation, mainly role-playing, and discovery learning, i.e. inquiry-based learning. Social cognitive constructivism is reshaping the idea of traditional classrooms in the United States. Chapter 3. The ability to take a traditional classroom and turn it into a constructivist classroom is a daunting idea or task for many educators. Many make constructivism out to be a big bad thing that will cause them many headaches, hours of professional development, and training. The implementation of constructivist practices is easier than many believe. For example, a class is learning about the influx of mills and textile mills in the United States during the early 1900s. In a traditional classroom, the teacher is lecturing the students with the assistance of PowerPoint, while the students are quietly taking notes. In this situation, the teacher is not posing questions to the students, and the students are not asking questions to connect or show their understanding. It follows the bottom-up approach in education and follows standards to a T within a certain amount of time. A teacher can easily transform this lesson to create a more constructivist or student-centered atmosphere and attitude within the classroom through a gallery walk and research project activity. The teacher could briefly introduce the lesson by stating the class will learn about the Gilded Age or Age of Industry in American history. 
students in groups are encouraged to walk around the room and look at pictures. Students soon discover all the pictures are of children working in mills and factories. The students are walking around and doing the gallery walk. They are asking questions to one another and writing down items they want to research or discuss with their group. After the gallery walk, students can work collaboratively on developing an item or question they want to research. Students get to direct their learning through the activity. The teacher is the facilitator walking around from group to group and listening. According to Lee and Gal, 2015, the instructor should act as a facilitator to create an environment where students can freely build their deep understanding of the subject matter through their close involvement. After research, the students present the to their topic and connect it to their lives. Allowing students to move, question, research, and direct their learning, they connect to the material on a deeper level and can connect it to different things in their world. Another example of taking a traditional classroom into a constructivism classroom is role play. In a traditional classroom, a teacher would simply teach the students about a historical figure and then move on to the next topic. This can be easily transformed by allowing students to research and become the person. Role playing allows the student to direct their learning and how it is connected to the world around them. This activity allows the student to become the expert and teach their peers thus keeping the classroom and instruction student-centered. In a constructivist classroom, many activities and aspects within the classroom look and sound different than in a normal or traditional classroom. Apong Naku, Shore, Saunders Stewart, and Giles in 2015 state, teachers need tools to systematically and efficiently assess the presence, quantity, or quality of inquiry instruction in a classroom. Tests, or assessing the student's understanding and overall knowledge, look different as well. Students in a constructivist classroom have more opportunities to show or express what they know rather than just taking a test. Students are assessed through projects using rubrics that grade based on collaborative learning with their group, high-level thinking, connection, etc. Students can also be assessed through journal writing and guest lecturing, where they teach the class on the topic they mastered. A constructivist classroom assessment does not pigeonhole students into how they can show or express their understanding or overall knowledge of a topic. Chapter 4. Project-based learning is defined, according to the Buck Institute for Education, as a teaching method in which students gain knowledge and skills by working for an extended period of time to investigate and respond to an engaging and complex question, problem, or challenge. Problem-based learning is when students work with classmates to solve complex and authentic problems that help develop the content knowledge as well as reasoning, communication, and self-assessment skills. Project and problem-based learning reinforces constructivist philosophy by allowing students to solve real-life problems or situations. Working through problems allows students the opportunity to use research, prior knowledge, and questioning to connect the curriculum with the world around them. Problem and project-based learning creates a student-centered classroom and students direct their learning. An example of project-based learning is role play. According to McDaniel in 2000, the value of role play is that it allows students to work out for themselves complex historical debates and situations. Chapter 5. The education field is an essential strand in the fabric of the United States. Educators are given the job to teach, influence, and help model their students into becoming upstanding and active citizens of society. The future of the education system needs to change and become more focused on the students. We can no longer think of our students as blank slates. Students in today's classrooms are more knowledgeable with technology, bring different ideas to the table, and their level of thinking is higher than the education system gives them credit for. This is a call to action for everyone within the education system. We need to place our students in the center and always have them in mind as we change that system. Students need to be challenged academically and personally. Educators need to connect academia to the real world and to allow students to direct their educational journey. The world of education does not need to settle for the status quo or be satisfied with tradition since it is what we have always done. We need to bring the education system fully into the 21st century, which is a constructivist classroom.